What's going on guys? Waco from Revolution. Here with Wilfred Brigon and Robin Talandier, the dynamic duo behind Atelier Wen. Yes. And we're talking about now the third watch that we've launched together. Yeah. Please tell us about the stunning perception in front of us. Yeah, so this is the, the Tue. This is sort of like the, the last installment of the, the our collaboration trilogy that we began uh, back in 2022. This one is pretty special because I think at the beginning it was not meant to be. Uh, so the pattern that you see here is one that is called Diamond Guilloche. It's very, very hard to do. I mean, I'll give more details about that later. But initially, so we had selected that pattern for our red watch, the C. And uh, when I told Cheng that we would need a hundred of them, uh, one day he called me and he says, it's, it's impossible to give you a hundred because this dial takes about 36 hours to make. It's too tiring, too painful. The rejection rate is so high, it makes no sense. And this is what we started with. So initially it was meant to be a, a 25 pieces run. I had the prototype with me. I showed it at every event, every fair. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have been doing that. I should have been selling our regular watches, but I was like, hey, hey, you, when I see this one, you can't get this one. There's only 25. Uh, and, and, and it worked. People were like, oh, that's the one I want. I, I want this one that I, I, can't, I can't get. And, and we had a lot of demand. I think a lot of people were actually messaging you, messaging David, Constant. Uh, asking for that piece and so much that well at the end we, we decided to, to make a bit more so we decided to, to increase that number to 50. That's amazing and, and so am I correct sir that this is the most challenging Guilloche pattern that Master Chung has ever attempted it, and succeeded in? It, it, it is so it takes him 36 hours uh, to make and this one is super complex because uh, on our other Guilloche patterns basically you have one set of line uh, that is being repeated to create the pattern. But this one, the pattern comes from the intersection of two sets of line. So sort of like the difficulty increases exponentially because like you need to have the first set usually consistent, but the second set usually consistent too. And if one of them is like slightly off, uh, then well, the, 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 the optical effect that we want to create is off and it doesn't work, so the dial is, is discounted. You know, when we say it takes 36 hours to make, the amazing thing is that uh, this is not 36 hours in a week or whatnot, this is 36 continuous hours, right? Because if you leave the machine on its own for like more than say 15 minutes at a time, uh, the settings like deregulate and then you got to start again from scratch, right? So you're never going to get it back to, to, to where it was. And so basically there are three people that are relaying themselves wow. uh, and these are only the most experienced people who are working in Master Chung's workshop who's been with him, who've been with him for a number of years and Master Chung himself, right? Who are relaying the, uh, each other from 8 a.m. you know on the first day to like 8 p.m. on the next day, right? Um, so, you know, that person taking the night shift, you can imagine the amount of like kind of concentration mm -hmm. and just how, 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 how tough it is, hence what he, why he wanted to do only 25 in the first place. And as Robin mentions, the pattern is really just like super dense, right? And with, this is why you've got this sort of like double kind of refraction of light. And even though it's so dense and, and so fine, just a slight sort of slip of the hand or like kind of deregulation of the machine uh, means that you're going to see light diffract in the wrong way and you're going to see it a mile away. Yeah. Right. Even though it's just kind of like one hair's breadth uh, just off, it's immediately visible. And we actually have a dial that uh, you know, was rejected that we see like that. And literally, you can put it at the end of at the table, I can glance at it and I'll see that it's, it's, uh, it's ruined, right? Mm. And so in that sense, it's, it's really a lot more sensitive than a lot of the patterns that, that we've done to date, where you have, let's say, an, a very, very small margin of error, but you just have zero margin of error yeah. on this one. Now that I know, that it's a 36 hour process by yeah. relay that gives me even yeah. you know so much more respect for the work that goes into this. I had never thought of that. Yeah. That the fact that if you stop for more than 15 minutes the all the settings on the machine might change or maybe it's a heat thing or something like that things you're contracting yeah. or expanding but nonetheless like it will be different like you can't continue on that same dial. That's right. So the idea that you've got a three man team that's basically taking shifts and like jumping onto the machine one yeah. after the other and continuing the work yeah. seamlessly that's nuts. You know, I want to talk to you guys because I consider you both to be pioneers in two ways. Uh, the first is you were really one of the first of the new generation to bring handcraft back to watchmaking and make it relevant to the next generation. And you guys were one of the very first to bring that back. Why do you think that was so important, Wilfred? And why do you think it resonates so much with your generation? I think you put it, uh, you put it quite well, right? And, um, you know, ultimately people don't buy, or like saying that, okay, the Apple Watch is out, look at all the function it has. Uh, this, like, hands down beats any mechanical watch uh, on function that you could ever have, which is, which is true. Like, completely misses the point of why people are attracted to mechanical watches in the first place, right? What we have with this piece, which you don't have, say, with uh, an Apple Watch, is really a, 
just a human story of kind of the pursuit of perfection, especially with uh, you know with with this particular DAO pattern. So Cui means uh, kind of perfect, the the epitome, the the, the, the sort of pinnacle, right, of uh, of achievement at least in our context uh, for for Gyoshe, right. And so you know, is this what this tells is the story of Master Chung, who really set out a decade ago to enter the unknown, as it were, because he'd never seen a Gyoshe machine to learn this craft. In the end, succeeded after trial and failure, which is something that you know, despite the fact that it's happening in uh, you know some remote kind of mountainous region in China, uh, anyone can really sort of like resonate with, right, uh, and as aspire to, and uh, who after you know like a decade of work and training other people and sort of like kind of passing on that craft that he developed himself, uh, is now like really attaining uh, sort of like amazing levels of perfection in his craft, uh, and that's what they, this tells. And at the same time, you know, because. Humans are not perfect, right? That's sometimes a little bit reflected uh, in the DAO as well, right? If you take it under, you know, a 36x macro loop, you might see that, you know, oh, this thing is, it's not exactly like what a machine would have done, right? And so in that sort of like blemish, in that tiny imperfection, you're really seeing, you know, the mark of the craftsman, right? And you can see, oh wow, uh, you know, you can appreciate for it for what it is. An enormous effort by somebody who's just as imperfect as you, but how, who really like, uh, you know, sort of like reaches out to perfection. You know, we can now say that the perception is a fully mature watch. Mm. It's been around for a couple of years now. There's a huge collecting culture around it. So tell us what's next. The sort of perennial challenge that we've had, and, and this goes back to like earliest days, right? Has been uh, developing products that are, uh, you know, in French we would say abouti, that really go to the end of the concept, right? Um, that are the, the fullest versions, uh, what they can be and that in line with kind of our product philosophy pushes the envelope on things that are possible because that's what we find to be you know, interesting, right? Uh, unfortunately, it takes a long, long time to do these things. And so the perception took three years from like start to you know, prototype in our hands and four years until the first watch was on a customer's wrist, right? Which is a really long time. And so what we realized is that there are a lot of things that we do where uh, unfortunately like even if we want to control like the duration that it's going to take and we're like, okay, it's going to be one or two months, whatever it is to develop that, that dial. At the end of the day, we really don't know, right? Uh, because it's never been done in that particular way before. It's never been done with that material, with that craft, with that person. And so, you know, something that might take, you know, say two months if you're using a controlled process ends up taking a year, a year and a half, right? And so because we realized that, uh, we said, okay, you know what? Let's accept that uh, we're going to have a lot of uncertainty around these things that we want to do. And so as opposed to saying, okay, we're going to do this project over the next 12 months, let's just do all these projects at the same time that we would like to do. And then we'll see which ones reach the finish line first because we ultimately like, don't know, right? And so we've been working on a number of these projects. I can't reveal uh, you know, all of them, but uh, you know, we aim to have within, say, the next kind of like three to four years, I'd say a pretty full lineup, uh, pretty full collection, right? So today we've got uh, the sports chic kind of model uh, with the perception. Uh, we like to release some kind of iterations, complications, um, you know, of that, right? Uh, we'd like to launch completely new models, and that's something that we're definitely working on. And so, you know, you'll likely see a, a dress piece from us, uh, you know, in the not too distant future. Uh, Diver is something that obviously we'd like to add uh, to, to the lineup at some point in the future, and um, you know run on uh, maybe three to five kind of core collections and then uh, you know release some kind of crazy uh, or yeah sort of out of the box uh, limited editions uh, you know here and there that's kind of how we, we envision the future you know we have this sort of blue sky vision of really becoming the one champion for for chinese watchmaking and obviously that that heavily goes through the the watches that that we make and in order to to really be that brand, we need to deliver watches that are the, the reflect of that vision. So it means like increasingly, quote unquote, better watches with like nicer craft, more, more, more interesting materials, like things which are really, really novel, really outstanding, really, really marvelous. And so this really pushes us to think about products which have not been done before, meaning that therefore this R&D time is very uncertain because when you, you ask your supplier to do it, they're like, 
maybe we could, but we have no ideas because we, we haven't done it. So let's try to figure out how to do it and then let's try to see how long it takes. And uh, pretty much all our next projects are of that kind. I mean, per Perception was already a bit like that because, you know, like, I mean, Cheng was, yes, already doing Gioche, but he was not doing Gioche for watches. He was doing it on plate, on lighters. So, so, so watches was, I mean, already it took a lot of time, R&D wise, like, how do we uh, integrate it into like a watch dial? How do we do? Do we make it fit into a watch case and whatnot? Talk to me about all the um, improvements that yeah, we've no, seen. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually, there's a lot. And as I was telling you, we had to destroy most of the components of the 21st five pieces we made and, and remake them. So um, the first one actually is the hands. Uh, so those are like new redesigned hands. You can see that the, the sort of counterbalance on the second hand is like a bit larger. It's also way more voluminous. It's, that's also the case on the hour hand and the minute hand. I think those hands, they bring two benefits. Uh, the one is that, well, from an aesthetic point of view, it's, it's more balanced, it's more voluminous, it's nicer. With the heat blowing, you do see it more and you see therefore like more shades of blue, which well, contrast well with the silver dial. Secondly, is that then now the, the center of gravity of the second hand is closer to the center of gravity of the watch. So it means that the, the movement in the end has more amplitude and is therefore more accurate and can have like slightly more power reserve. So there's also like a technical benefit to that. Um, the, the second thing is the, the bracelet. So you can see that the, the links are actually like do have like chamfers, all of them. Uh, that's like pretty similar to the, to the sun that we released before. But actually the, this bracelet is still pretty different because uh, we, we, we did like improve a lot the, the clasp. Um, so the, the clasp, we do have like the, the extension there. Um, this extension, actually, the reason why we did it is because we realized that beforehand the, the blades were a little long and so for very small wrists when you would remove uh, most of the links, actually the, the blade would hit uh, on the links and it would make the bracelet very stiff. Uh, so our first hunch was, okay, why don't we make the blade shorter? But then it was very hard to put on uh, because it's too short. So we thought about this system where it's the, the same like opening value, if you could call it this way, but at the same time when it's closed, it, it's in the shorter so that it's, it's more, more comfortable. That's brilliant. Um, some small other stuff, uh, cool stuff too, is that for the, for the first time, the, the clasp shell is made of grade five titanium. Beforehand, it used to be made of steel and then plated with titanium because our supplier like, hadn't figured out how we could do that in titanium. Uh, but now we were able to do it. Same for the, the button, actually, which was very painful to, to make with all the, the small chamfers around the, the one. Um, the, the case back did have a, a number of changes. So the, the case back is also now made of grade 5 titanium, not anymore plated. Uh, but we, we added this hammering texture around the lion, and so that makes it sort of like less uh, I mean, more, more dynamic, more, more vivid, because you, well, you have more texture and therefore a contrast system from that. But also the, the markings are done using CNC uh, and have a very 3D and um, deep look. Uh, and our inspiration for that actually was the old uh, Kyutayu watches. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Kyutayu. So he's like the, the father of like Asian independent watchmaking. He's the first person to have ever made a, a tourbillon in Asia. Um, and he had the signature thing where in on his case backs he would have like very, very deep like 3D CNC markings that I thought are really cool and I wanted to have this kind of like small nod to him, uh, sort of like a small Easter egg uh, to like the, the history of Asian watchmaking. That's awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing this uh, watch with me. Thank you for uh, col the collaboration as well. We can't wait to, to launch it. It's 50 pieces. Thanks to, oh, Master Cheng, thank you very much for agreeing to that. <laughs> yeah, it's an thanks absolute so pleasure and honor, and I love what you guys do. Cheers. Thank you so much, Thank you, Robin. Thanks, Wilfred, and again, congratulations. Cheers. Peace.